Most women don't know this, but men will pursue you and treat you directly proportionately to a few critical decisions they quietly make about you. Without knowing what these are, you're going to end up wasting a lot of time with men who will never commit. So in my video today, I'm going to go behind the curtain and let you see the hidden check boxes he's evaluating you through before deciding to ask you to marry him. So listen, women already have a hidden criteria they may not be sharing with men that they're definitely evaluating when they connect with someone. Is he financially responsible or financially set even? Is he someone who is intelligent? Is he conscious? Is he open-hearted? Is he kind? Does he treat his family with respect? How does he talk about his mother? There's all this hidden criteria that women have when they evaluate a man. Well, here's the truth. Men have hidden criteria. And by hidden, I don't mean that it's a secret. I mean, they are subconsciously, without even understanding it themselves, evaluating you through a series of filters that if you are not aware of those, you might be missing out on some awesome men and you may be working really hard to try to fit into a mold that is not for you to try to fit into. If these things that I'm sharing with you resonate with your integrity, resonate with your values, and are the kind of thing that not just make you more of a fit for a man, but make your life better, make you a more worthwhile human being for yourself, then I encourage you to adopt thinking of this as you connect with men. Here's the first criteria that's hidden that most men will never share with you, may not even fully consciously say to themselves, but it's definitely impacting if they're ever going to pop the question to you. And that is how alive do I feel in her presence? Why is this so important? Well, because the feeling of effervescence and radiance and excitement and passion and joy is something that is currently a life altering experience. And listen to this. This is really cool for you. This is not something that you do for the guy to like you more. It's something you do for your life to be the most self-expressed version of you. So what happens when your thermostat, emotional thermostat is set at mid-mass? Mid-mass means not super excitement, no drama, but just mid-level. That means that you're going to have a hard, hard time attracting a guy who wants to effervescently say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. It can happen. It's going to be a lot of arm twisting, a lot of just endless conversations. But when there's a bigger feeling of, it's not even sexual tension, it's a bigger feeling of this woman is so connected to her life force that I can't, even if I want to, not feel compelled to be around her energy. She is like the sun. She's a self-ignited source of light that I feel incredibly warm and connected. I feel myself more. I'm a better human being. She is my muse. I want to do more for her than I would if she weren't in my life. I want to become a better man. That's the type of energy that you can bring to the table if you're connected to your life force that will make a giant difference in his ability to much more quickly, much more convincedly say, I do. Second, and this is an area where I'm going to be a little more nuanced here, talk about there is a very messed up double standard in general in society about men and women in terms of sexual boundaries. Now, the guy you choose to connect with may not be one of those who is misogynistic in nature or have a strong double standard or even a double standard, but there's still going to be things that affect him in the way he thinks and feels. And the question he's asking himself as he's evaluating it through is, does she have clear sexual boundaries? Another way of saying this is, what does it take for someone to have sex with her? Again, nothing morally right or wrong if you have no boundaries. It's just men are going to prefer women where you have to go through more hoops to connect sexually than not. Even though he may want to be sexual with you, if you give in too quickly, that also means you give in to any guy too quickly, which means it's not a special for him. So fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which angle you want to take into this, he's going to want to know that you have a higher criteria for connecting sexually. And that doesn't just mean sex, that means sexual like experiences than not. What does it take for him to have sex with you? Just inviting you for drinks and calling you to his place? Or does he have to invest time, energy, be in a committed, exclusive relationship? When you're someone who's not just playing games, but has a clear sense of value and worth with herself, also understands that sex is something more sacred than just connecting with someone physically for many different reasons, then the guy is going to value you more if you have a very specific set of steps that need to happen before 
you're open with him that way. The third criteria he's quietly valuing you through is, does she need and value my contribution? Is she someone who's so fiercely independent, who's convinced herself that we can connect and there's nothing that I bring to the table that's really in need of hers. It's all a want. It's all ice cream on top of the sundae. If there's nothing he brings to the table that he can't do well in excess of what you can do for yourself, perhaps not the best guy for you. That doesn't mean you're codependent with him. That means there's going to be needs that are met within the relationship in an interdependent way. So if the guy gets the feeling that you don't need him because you genuinely feel you don't and his contribution is minimally valued, guess what he's going to do? He's going to connect with someone who actually values his contribution and it goes beyond just the nice to have to something that's genuinely a value add to your life. The fourth hidden criteria he's evaluating you through is, can she express her needs directly? And that doesn't mean that you may not want to use more words than he does, because that might be the case. But can she express her needs without drama? Can she be direct instead of being passive aggressive? Can she say, here's what happened, here's how I felt, here's what I need going forward, instead of maybe silent treatment? And then, as I said, passive aggressive experiences, like maybe making jokes about him. When you are the kind of woman who has already decided, forget about the guy for your own life, that you are drama free, that doesn't mean you don't go through pain, doesn't mean you don't have needs, that doesn't mean that you're someone who has to be just looking at the positive side of life. It means that when you have a challenge, you're focused on expressing what went on, but also focused on the solution, focused on how can we make this better versus why did you do this to me? Now, before I share my last three hidden needs that are very powerful for you to understand so you can get more of what you want, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware or honestly not aware at all of the real root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, to attract marriages and life partnerships when nothing else had worked before. And what I've done is I've put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You're going to see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and within 60 seconds, you're going to have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and a custom report based on your specific blind spot with the number one thing you can do today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. If we're talking, pop the question. If we're talking, spending the rest of my life with you, here's the fifth one. Are we sexually compatible? Now, I understand that I might seem like I'm contradicting myself. I'm not. I'm going to explain why. There is a big difference between saying to someone, I need to be in an exclusive relationship. I need to have the safety of understanding we're compatible. I need to know we both want the same thing. I need to know that you're a safe human being and is consistent in his approach. I need to have met your friends. There's a few things you can set in place that are going to give you an ample grounding safety space to evaluate sexual compatibility. If you're one of those women, and again, you're perfectly in your right to do that, who want to wait until after marriage, the risk you're taking is you're saying, I do, and till death do us part with someone who may have a highly incompatible sexual expression that you might find not just not fun, but actually hurtful. So while I'm saying have a very clear set of standards that go all the way up to being in an exclusive relationship, if the guy doesn't understand that you're sexually compatible, he's going to be less likely, even though it's still possible, but far less likely to say, I'm going to sign on the dotted line for the rest of my life. But beyond the guy feeling like he can do that, you may not want to take the risk. I'm talking to you right now, sharing that I've had many conversations with women who, through tears, shared with me what happened after their honeymoon. And they were so happy. And then they found out because they went until the honeymoon to have this experience that it was an actually painful experience. And now that's the beginning of a really bad roller coaster that took years to be able to get out. So if you want my take on this, wait as much as possible, but definitely test this out before you decide to be with someone for the rest of your life. Number six, does she trust me enough to not try to control me? So here's going to be a fine balancing act. You need to be able to share your needs, share your wants, share your vision, but also there comes a point, and this is not something that is necessarily against you, that you've learned that in order to advance in this world, you really have to push through and make things happen. If you're with an intelligent man, if you're with a guy who owns his stuff, if you're with a guy who's conscious and you're trying to tell him how to do things and micromanage him and in subtle ways control him, committing to being with you for the rest of his life would be emotional suicide. So while there is definitely 
the need to express what you want and the things that you are interested in and where you draw the line and what your boundaries are, there also needs to be space there for him to be able to do his thing and you trust him enough that he's going to do it. Now, if he gives you ample reason or reason for you to doubt it, you can change your stance, but you need to be able to be with someone that you trust enough to not try to control or manipulate in some ways. The last criteria is an overarching experience that he's going to be constantly evaluating in you. And that is, does she value herself enough to walk away if she has to? This encompasses a lot of things. First of all, does she have enough confidence in herself that if I were to cross the line in some way that's irreversible for her, that she can, despite the love she feels for me, love herself more? Is she someone who's going to hold that line so that I continue checking in myself and making sure that I'm always the first version of myself? Does she value herself enough to make decisions that might be painful for the relationship, but ultimately good for her? Here's why that's so important, because when he understands that there is certain points that must not be crossed, then he's going to think five times before doing something silly, right? But also, you're going to have the experience of loving him, expressing yourself in the best of ways, but also knowing that you don't have to stay if the situation is not good or healthy for you. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I can grow and reach more women. Too many women watch these videos, but don't subscribe and it makes a huge difference for me. So if you can click subscribe, that'd be awesome. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.